Got to, of course, start with the Fed and inflation. You know, uh, David, you said something really uh, that I've heard no one else in the street say, but I agree with you. Uh, for all of this hand wringing and all of the gyrations in the market, you think the Fed holds tight no matter what, that they stand pat and they will not budge. I, I think that's right. It's something I learned the hard way myself, Charles, after the financial crisis is in 2013, you had the taper tantrum and 14, 15. People kept predicting that they were going to move off the zero bound and they kept not doing it. And ultimately, I think it's part of the addiction to low rates. It doesn't just get baked into a society. It gets baked into central banking. Think of how many people you may know that say, oh, I'm waiting to refinance my house or I'm waiting to buy a house because I want the 3% rate to be 2 point eight percent. It's like that little right. difference makes such a big deal now on a, in a retail sense. Well, with central banking, it's the same way. They've spoiled credit markets, and I don't think they can get off of this for quite some time. And to that point, I think the market knows this. I really see a lot of these sessions when we're down and the headlines are concerned about inflation. I think the market pushes the Fed around. The market pushes the president around. The stock market pushes everyone around. Uh, David, I would imagine you'd be okay with a 10 percent dip. Of course I would. I mean, who in the world would be upset about a 5 to 7 percent dip? I completely agree with Phil. I think it's very likely that will at some point happen. If it isn't in the next month or two, it's going to happen eventually. If anyone puts a chart up of the recovery out of the financial crisis and a uh, chart of the recovery post-COVID, they're identical in their shape. Yet in the middle of 2010, the second year of recovery post-crisis, we had a dip and then the market moved much higher from there. I think we'll have a dip. But the only thing I want to say, Charles, is I do think people need to be selective. I would not go buy a 10 percent dip in technology and assume it's bottomed stuff that was up 70 or 100 percent or 150 percent. There's a lot of things that are more frothy than 10 percent. So to me, I'd still be very selective. There's not just an inflation problem that people are worrying about. I don't believe that story at all. Bond yields tell me I'm right. What I'm worried about is valuation on some of the expensive stuff out there. Yeah, and there's no doubt that even after some have come down, at least using traditional valuation metrics, they all seem, most of those hot ones seem uh, overvalued. Let me stay with you on this, David. The influence of crypto, right? We started today with a big, uh, uh, big move down, uh, Bitcoin, some of these others, uh, big news out of China, which I don't know if it's news, but they reiterated, hey, we don't, you know, to merchants don't use it. Uh, it's about point zero, it's about 0.5 percent of total investments. The stock market's 41 percent, bond market's 26 percent. And yet I'm hearing people say the market's down, stocks are down because of cryptocurrency. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, what I would say is in a particular hour or a particular day, if there is $600 billion of value that comes out of something, it's always possible people are selling their winners to deal with losses and in, in their other stuff. And so it's not impossible that there's a correlation there in a very short window of time. Ultimately, the thing with China or the thing with an Elon Musk tweet or or the thing with the ransom folks last week, none of those stories in and of themselves are necessarily fundamental, but all of them do tell you the most important thing you need to know. Crypto is held by speculators and speculators have weak hands and they will drop something 30 percent in one night if they get uh, scared of it. And so I just don't believe anyone's able to answer the question as to why they fundamentally and intelligently hold what they consider to be a store of value in crypto. Stores of value do not go down 30 percent in three hours and then rally back and rally down. It's all over the map. It's a speculator's game. Some people made a lot of money with that speculation, but it's not the type of thing that I think people should be doing from a fundamental standpoint. Some, some would say if you only saw gold back in the, in the first B.C., it did the same thing. Don't worry about it. This is a long way to go. Hey, two of the best to start off today. A pretty crazy day in the market. So I want to say thank you, David, Phil, Phil Blancato. Thank you both very much, guys.